Now the first thing I want to say is while this is called the Very Colored Ear Warmer, I'm going to knit it on camera in a solid color just because some of you have left me some very nice comments in previous videos that when I use multicolored yarn on camera it's a little hard to see the stitching. Um, and I know you don't want to hear me chatter so let's just get going. The first thing I'm going to do is to cast on 22 stitches. I like to use uh, a long tail cast on but I'll be honest I use a long tail cast on for almost anything. So I'm going to start by putting a slip knot on my knitting needle. I'm using a size 8 knitting needle here which is also a 5 millimeter and uh, again just some random worsted weight yarn that I had laying around. For the long tail cast on I'm going to put my thumb and index finger between these two strands of yarn. This is my tail yarn in the front and my working yarn which is the skein that uh, the strand of yarn we attach to the ball of yarn working yarn in the back. I'm going to go uh, V for victory <laughs> That's how I learned it. Under the front loop, under the back loop, pull it through and leave it on there. So there's my V for victory. I'm pulling the yarn down a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going under that front loop from front to back, under the loop that's over my index finger from back to front, pull it through and I'm going to let my thumb come out of there so I can tighten up that stitch. I don't need it to be super tight. But I'm going to keep going there until I have 22 stitches on my needle. Alright, here are my 22 stitches. And the first thing I'm going to do is slip one. And I'm slipping my stitches purlwise in this pattern. So I'm just slipping my stitch from the left hand needle to the right hand needle. No twisting, nothing crazy but I put my right hand needle tip as if I was going to purl. Now the next thing it says is RT and that is not retweet, it is right twist. So you can see I brought my yarn to the back of the work between the needles because I'm going to knit now. So I'm going to ignore that first stitch and I'm going to knit into the second one. So you see I have to uh, sort of cross it over the one that's left. Now I'm not going to push it off the left hand needle yet, I'm going to just leave it. Now I'm going to knit in the first stitch, the one I skipped. And this is what it looks like. And now I'm going to push it off the left hand needle. I'm going to push both of them off at the same time. Let's try that again. I'm going to skip the first stitch and you'll notice I've pushed the stitches up a little closer to the point only because it gives me a little more room to maneuver. I need a little room in there. It's not like just knitting in an orderly row. So I'm going to knit that first stitch. Pardon me. This is the first stitch I'm knitting. It's the second one on the needle. I don't want to be confusing. I'm leaving it on the left hand needle. I'm going to knit the first or skipped stitch and I'm going to push both of them off the left hand needle. Now that I have done two right twists, I'm going to knit four. One, two, three, four. Now let's do it again. Skip the first stitch, knit into the second stitch and leave it on the left hand needle. So there's that second stitch knit. Go to knit the first or skipped stitch. Push them both off the left hand needle. Do it again. Right twist. So after two right twists we knit four. One, two, three, four. Two more right twists. There's one. And here's the other one. And we're going to knit the last stitch. Now 
So here's what we have going on after that first row. It's really hard to see that the right twists are twisting right, but we'll see it more easily when we have a few more rows knit onto the pattern. For row two, which is the wrong side row, we're going to slip one. Remember, I'm always slipping purl wise. Going to purl four. One, two, three, four. Now it says knit four, purl four twice. So here's the first time, knit one, two, three, four, purl four, one, two, three, four, and then here's the second iteration. Knit four, one, two, three, four, and purl four, one, two, three, four, and knit the last stitch. Now, for the next four rows, it says, so rows three to six, repeat rows one and two twice. So for rows three, four, five, six, we're going to knit row one, row two, row one, no, row two. So why don't you guys do that and meet me back here and we'll take a look at row seven. Here we are when I have finished knitting the first six rows. So now you can see our twist stitches are popping up a little bit and they're twisting to the right, which is why they're called right twist stitches. So now for row seven, all I need to do is slip one, remember we're slipping purl wise, and knit all the way across. Row seven is finished. Now for row eight, we're going to slip one, knit four, one, two, three, four, and now we're going to purl four, knit four twice. So that's purl two, three, four, knit four, one, two, three, four, and do it again. Purl four, one, two, three, four, knit four, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to knit that last little stitch that's hanging out. So you may be noticing a theme here that we're always knitting the last stitch and we're always slipping the first stitch. So that was row eight. Now for row nine, we're going to slip one, knit four, one, two, three, four, and now we're back to our fancy right twists. So we're going to right twist twice. That's one, And that's two. Knit four, one, two, three, four, right twist twice, one, 
and two. Then knit four, one, two, three, four, and knit our last little lonely guy at the end. Then we're going to work row eight and nine twice, and row eight one more time. For row 15, we're going to just slip one and knit across. And for row 16, we're going to repeat row 2, and then we're going to repeat rows 1 through 16 for the pattern. So I'm going to put uh, a few more inches on this so you can get a closer look at the stitch pattern. So meet me right back here so you can see what you're doing. Now here we are with a much larger sample so you can see what this pattern actually looks like. So here are our sections with the twists, and here are some garter stitch sections. And you can see as you look at this that they stagger. That's why it's a 16 row repeat. A couple things I want to point out. Uh, one is I'm getting my housekeeping in now because none of you turkeys watch to the end of the video. <laughs> um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a nice comment, check out the blog, all those good things. Now, if you want this pattern written out, it is on the blog, which I will link in the description, and it is free, so you may have it. A um, couple things I wanted to point out. One is the edge is kind of wavy, but that's deliberate, and it's okay. And I think when you wear the headband, it's not going to look super wavy when it's stretched out, but even if it looks a little bit wavy, I think that's cool. So that's more of a feature than a bug. And the other thing I wanted to point out was this nice, neat edging that you get. The reason that we slip the first stitch of every row, and the reason that we consistently slip it pearl-wise, although I see that I made little oops down there, um, is to get this nice, neat edging to make sure that you have that slip stitch edging, which gives it a nice finish, and uh, you don't have to go back and put an edging on. You don't have to do anything else fancy. So the last thing I'm going to just point out, I would have bound off this edge. I would have sewed it into a circle, and that would have been my headband. And so the pattern tells you to end with a row 16, because originally I thought I was just going to seam it and call it done. But here's the thing, 16 rows, Man, that's a pretty long repeat, and it's possible, depending on the size that you want or the size of your head, that you don't want to do a full 16 rows. You might want to end it here or here or here, you know, depending on getting the size that you want. So what I did in the uh, sample that's in the photo is after I sewed it together, so I sewed the front, uh, the cast on and the bind off together, I squished it. <laughs> I ran uh, my tapestry needle up and down with a uh, running stitch, and I pulled it super tight so that where it's seamed, it's gathered. Now, if it's gathered, honestly, you're gonna n not know what row you ended on. So if you're thinking about having to end on a row other than row 16, I would say making that gathered seam would be a super smart idea. And you have two choices. You can put that gathered seam in the front, like it is in the photos, or you could put it in the back if you didn't wanna see it. And the last thing I wanted to show you is this is the yarn that I used in the original. It is a uh, Roll With It Melange from Coates and Clark, Red Heart. And the colorway is Paparazzi. And I'll have a link to that down below as well, places you can buy it. We do use affiliate links here, but that's a way for you to support us here on the channel without spending any additional money. So thanks so much for joining me. Please uh, stay tuned. I know we haven't done videos in a while, but that's because I had a weird job with an aggressive non-compete, and now I'm back. So new videos coming soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Have a good one.